For most wild animals around the world, every day is a struggle. If you manage to find enough food, you still have to deal with competitors. And of course, most animals always have to be on the lookout for predators. If that wasn't enough, some animals have to deal with extreme climates. And of course, most animals are affected by human-related factors. For some animals, these threats simply aren't enough, and they decide to threaten their own lives. Lots of animals are known to kill themselves, and this can be because of a whole host of complicated reasons. Some creatures, such as the P. aphid, will explode itself to protect other aphids. And sadly, some intelligent creatures will kill themselves for the same reasons that humans kill themselves. In some of the stranger cases, animals are known to kill themselves accidentally. This can either be through a bad decision, or through an injury that they inflict on themselves. In this video, I will be focusing on just a few of these stories, as I will be going through three animals that unintentionally kill themselves. To start off our story, we will be heading over to Indonesia, as our first group of animals are the Barbarusas. Now, Barbarusas are also sometimes called deer pigs, and Barbarusa refers to a genus of animals in the swine family. All members of this genus were once considered to be a single species, but in 2002, this all changed. Today there are four recognised species, and these four species can be found across multiple Indonesian islands. I think it's fair to say that these pigs are some of the strangest looking mammals on this planet, and they almost have a prehistoric appearance. One of their strangest features are their canine tusks, and these tusks actually pierce the flesh of the snout. The size and shape of the tusks differ from species to species, and these tusks are absent on the females. For the most part, it's unknown why the males have these tusks, as they don't come in very handy when fighting as they are backward facing. It's thought that it could help defend the male's face from the lower canines, or these tusks could be used to impress the females. In the wild, this species is mostly found in the underbrush of tropical forests, and just like many other pig species, they have quite a varied diet. Of course, they feed on a lot of plant matter, but they will also happily accept insects, fish, and small mammals. In the wild, the Babarusas have very few natural predators, but sometimes they are poached by humans. All the Babarusa species are threatened to some extent, and even though poaching does play a part, their main threat is habitat loss. They lose a lot of their habitat due down to logging and palm oil plantations, and the future really does look bleak for the Babarusas. If all of these outside factors weren't enough, male Babarusas are also known to threaten their own lives. The canine tusks on their face don't only pierce the flesh of their snout, but they can also go on to pierce their skull. In some rare cases, the male Barbarusa's tusks will grow into their skull, and this can eventually kill them. This is really quite a brutal and slow way to die, and the Babarusa is not the only species to suffer in this way. A lot of animals that have horns are known to kill themselves in this way, and it really is an incredible yet brutal way to go. For our next species, we will be making the short trip over to the Philippines, as we will be taking a look at the Philippine Tarsia. This tiny Tarsia is endemic to the Philippines, and is found in the southeastern part of the archipelago. This creature is a very small and delicate primate, and only has a height of around 16 centimeters. This makes it one of the smallest primates in the world, and it is a very specialized creature. The Philippine Tarsia is a predator, and they will happily feed on insects as well as vertebrates such as birds. To catch this prey, the Philippine Tarsia has to be very nimble, and it also needs to have great vision. Tarsiers have the largest eyes relative to their body size of any mammal, and each eye is as large as their brain. These eyes are so large that they are unable to move them in their sockets, so just like owls, they have a very flexible neck. Philippine Tarsiers have quite a few ways of communicating with each other, with some using loud piercing notes, and others using sweet bird-like twills. Even though many people are unaware of the Tarsiers' existence, they have been on this planet for a lot longer than we have. Tarsiers first started appearing around 45 million years ago, and at one point in time they were a lot more widespread. Today, the Philippine Tarsia is currently listed as near-threatened, as it is facing many problems in the wild. Historically, birds of prey have been their main enemies, but today they have to face new predators in the form of invasive species. Feral cats are known to hunt Tarsiers, and as there are so many feral cats in the Philippines, it can have a massive effect on their numbers. The growing population in the Philippines causes even more problems, as more of this primate's habitat is being converted into farmland, and slash and burn agriculture really hasn't helped their situation. As the Philippine Tarsier is a very cute animal, lots of people want to keep them as pets. 
This has spawned an illegal Tarsia pet trade. And this is not only bad because it affects their wild population, but it's also bad because Tarsias don't do very well in captivity. Most wild animals do relatively well in captivity and end up living longer than they would in the wild. Unfortunately, this is not the case with the Philippine Tarsia, as their life expectancy is essentially halved. In the wild, they are thought to be able to live for 24 years, yet in captivity, they only live to around 12 years old. This decreased life expectancy is down to a few factors, as it's very hard to recreate their natural diet. And also, the Philippine Tarsia is a very fragile and sensitive creature. Some Philippine Tarsiers get so stressed in captivity that they end up accidentally killing themselves. Any day-to-day -day noise can startle them, and when startled, they will try and escape. This often leads to the Tarsia hitting its head against objects, and this is actually fatal for the Tarsia as they have very thin skulls. This is just another reason why you should not keep wild animals as pets, as not only is it very selfish, but it also ruins their lives. So unfortunately, this story is quite a sad one, and really these creatures should only be admired in the wild. For our final inclusion on this list, we can head to pretty much anywhere around the world, because instead of focusing on one species, I will be focusing on snakes as a whole. Snakes are a very diverse group of animals, and today they can be found in many different shapes and sizes. They've been able to adapt to almost all ecosystems, and they're just as happy in the trees as they are in the desert or in the water. Although there are plenty of snake lovers out there, I think it's safe to say that snakes are some of the most hated animals on this planet. Of course, these creatures aren't very cute and cuddly, and as there are no plant-eating snakes, most species are quite bitey. There are around 3,000 species of snake alive today, and only around 10-15% to of these snakes are venomous. Only around 7% have a venom that's potent enough to kill a human. Yet by most people, they are still viewed as extremely dangerous creatures. Even some snakes with very potent venom are very unlikely to bite you, such as the relatively passive water snakes. In most cases, a snake will not bite you unless it feels like it needs to, and as venom takes quite a lot of energy to make, a snake will not use its venom unless it feels like it's in danger. In the wild, no snake species will kill itself intentionally, but both in the wild and in captivity, snakes are known to accidentally kill themselves. The most common way in which they do this is by eating themselves, and this is where the snake will start by swallowing its tail and then moving up its body. In some cases, the snake will not stop and it will continue until it's exhausted, and soon after, it will die. Of course, some snakes will do this accidentally, and most of the reasons why snakes do this are related to stress. It can be because of temperature regulation issues, hypermetabolism, hunger, shedding, or because of confusion. Luckily, if it's a captive snake, you are able to save them. But in most cases, it's a different story for wild specimens. This is definitely one of the stranger ways to go, and it turns out that a lot of snakes around the world accidentally kill themselves. If you know of any other animals that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.